Since we published our investigation into how Canadian police services handle sex assault cases, I've received dozens and dozens of emails from people asking for help and how they can get their police report. So I'm going to lay that process out for you step by step. Just before we start, you should know, you can only get access to your police file if your case is closed. And there's good reason for that. Police don't want to release sensitive information about the investigation before a judge has had a chance to weigh in on the facts. The other thing you should know is you do need a piece of government issued ID, so something like a driver's license or a passport. And the process is a lot easier if you happen to have checks. So hopefully you have checks. The process is a little bit different from province to province. And in fact, it's called different things depending on where you are in the country and which police service you're dealing with. It could be a freedom of information request or a municipal freedom of information request or an access to information request. For our purposes, I'm just going to say freedom of information requests. Um, the broad strokes are pretty much the same everywhere. This is probably going to be the most complicated part of the process for a lot of you. If you live in a big city or are policed by a large police service like the RCMP or OPP, you're probably okay. But in small or rural jurisdictions, it's a bit more complicated. So just go to your search engine type in the name of the police service that you're looking for, and then write the words freedom of information. And most likely the link will pop up right away. So now you're gonna make a note of the address, who the check is gonna be made out to, and for how much. I'll get to more on that later. I have found that really small police services don't always make it obvious where you should be mailing your FOI request. So you have two options. You can phone or email them and just ask. Um, or you can just write down the general address for the police service and just clearly address your request to the Freedom of Information Coordinator. In my experience, it always ends up in the right hands. Now you need to actually write the request. Many police services will have an FOI form on their website and you are welcome to use this. I usually just write my own letter. You will encounter the odd police service that demands you use their form that's fine, the information is always the same. This is what your letter is gonna look like. You're gonna start with the name of the police service and then your contact information and then address the letter to the Freedom of Information Coordinator. What you need to include in your letter is just enough information that they're able to find your file. Perhaps you have a case number. If you do, that'll make it a lot easier. If not, that's totally fine. We'll just give them enough information to find your file. So you can say, my name is Robin Doolittle. I was born on such and such a date. On or about such and such a date, I reported a sexual assault to the XYZ police service. The detective who dealt with my complaint is named XYZ. The incident happened at such and such location. And that should be enough for them to find your file. So now you need to say what you're actually asking for. I am seeking copies of all available records related to my complaint, including, but not limited to, a copy of my videotape statement, interview transcripts, police reports, officer notes, case synopses, photographs, hospital records, surveillance footage, uh, crime scene photographs, email correspondence with witnesses, and other official police forms relating to the investigation. You might want to tailor this section. If you know that there was no videotape statement, um, because perhaps you weren't called into the station, there's no need to ask for that. If you know there is surveillance footage from, say, a nightclub, ask for that. If you think that the police service was corresponding with uh, your university, you can ask for that information. So just try to be as specific as possible for the records. Police services will not give you access to information like witness statements or a suspect interview. I found it's just easier to say that you don't want it um, by including a line that says, I am not seeking access to third party information for private citizens. Now, I know you may be thinking, but I want that information. And you are more than welcome to ask for it and see how it goes. What will happen is the police service will contact that person and ask them permission if they can release it. Um, so as long as you're aware that they're going to do that, it will delay things a little bit, um, but you may get it, so it's up to you. Next, you want to include a line that says, whenever possible, I would like this information electronically. Please mail a copy of a CD to my home address listed above. 
The reason I ask for information electronically is that there is going to be a fee for this, and I found it's typically cheaper to get the information by CD. If you are getting perhaps hundreds of pages of documents, they're going to charge you a photocopy fee for every sheet of paper. I just find it, it's easier rather than getting huge stacks of paper. You may want the stacks of paper though. So if you want the stacks of paper, say I would like this information um, in photocopy form. Include a line saying if you have any questions, please contact me. Thank you. Write your name. Sign the letter. And that's the end of your letter. Freedom of information requests aren't actually free. Most provinces charge a small administrative fee to file a request. Um, once it's complete, you will likely need to pay an additional cost, which I found ranges between $50 and $120. The average filing fee is around five bucks. In some provinces like Alberta, the cost is $25. And I know that's all complicated, but that's why at the very beginning when you were searching your police service and making a note of the address, who to send the check out to and for how much, um, just really pay attention to that page and write down how much you need to spend and whom you're writing the check out to. Sometimes it's the actual police service, like the Toronto Police Service, but in other cases, like the uh, RCMP, it's to the Receiver General of Canada. So again, I know that's all confusing. It will all be online, or you may have to call the police service and just ask. And lastly, you will need to send a check. If you do not have checks, you will need to go to the bank and get a money order. This can be a bit of a pain, but I haven't encountered a police service that won't accept a money order uh, if you don't have checks. So you're gonna take your check, your letter, and a scan of your government issued ID, front and back, put it in an envelope and mail it to the police service. It'll take about 30 days for the police service to respond to your request to acknowledge that they've received it. And then after that, I found it takes anywhere between one to about three months for you to actually receive the records. If for some reason you don't hear from the police service at all after you send off your request, you may need to phone the FOI coordinator and ask for an update. In that case, just call the general line, ask to speak with whoever handles freedom of information requests, tell them your name, tell them when you sent the request in and you're looking for an update. If you are having problems at any point in this process, feel free to email me and I'll do my best to help. Uh, my email address is robindoolittle at globamail.com. It should be right down here. And if you've had success getting copies of your police file and are interested in sharing your story, I'd also love to hear from you. Good luck everyone and thanks for watching.